Okay, Mr. Gov. So, getting into combat now. Um, once you got overseas, can you take me through your first experience in combat once you were in Belgium? I got it. Well, as I said, we landed in Cherbourg and we were bivouacked out in a in an orchard for about three or four weeks thinking, you know, when are we going to get up there? We don't hear any firing, we don't hear any cannons, where are we going to go? Well, we soon found out. Boom, we loaded on trucks and we're going into Belgium now. And I can't remember the town, they, a lot of them had funny names and same with Holland. I, but here we are, you're coming into, and our officers are telling them, now you guys are going to, here's where we're going, we're going into combat. Okay, we get there and we're kind of in behind the front lines for about two or three days. And the next, after maybe two or three days, they said, tomorrow we're moving up to the front. Oh, that's it. And everybody kept thinking, you know, like World War I. Well, that movie means we're going to move up to the trenches or something, you know, tomorrow you're going to. So that day, we all got ammunition. Believe it or not, up until that, I didn't even have one round for that 45. <laughs> we were all issued ammunition. And guys are, my pockets were loaded with 45 clips. Like I'm going to go out there and fire that 45, you know, 50 times. I couldn't hit the side of a barn with that 45 anyhow. But we all took hand grenades. Everybody wanted, everybody's got a hand grenade hanging on her, you know, because we're going into combat and we're going to go in tomorrow. So we move up, 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 up. Okay, it's getting dark and we're hunkered down there now. Being heavy weapons, you are not in attack. When they attack, the riflemen attack because they got, you know, they can run. Heavy weapons, you, when you've got that tripod, it's not an, it's not an offensive weapon, really. Because you have, you know, you have to set it up and everything else. You're running in there and you're trying to get down and get safe or whatever. So, okay, they're moving up. And during that night, we hear all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. We, mortars and artillery are blowing and machine guns are going. And that's the first time we ever heard a German machine gun. Brr, 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 brr. And you're going, what the heck is that? That's a German, we call them burp guns. That's a machine gun. Ours was fire a burst of six. That's what you said when you pulled the trigger. Fire a burst of six. Six bullets came out. There's, I don't know, ten bullets came out at that same amount of time. But we heard that. We heard machine gun fire, artillery, mortars, and we're sitting back there getting shaky. Okay, finally it all stopped. No more shooting. Dawn start coming in, and the next thing we start, guys start coming back. No rifle, no helmet, arm in a sling, and they're walking back through us. Stay in the ditches. Stay in the ditches. That was their big thing. Okay, we move up now to the front, right? And up there in Holland, it was the same in Holland and Germany. All the towns were like clustered together. Everybody, even the farmers had their, everything was clustered together and all around them was fields, flat fields, meaning to get from here to there, you got to cross that flat field. And that's what this was, a completely flat agricultural field. And now this is, you know, this is in the fall of the year, so the crops were down. So we get up there and we look out there and I could, without even trying, I could count 25 dead GIs. The shock of your life, that was it. The shock, you, now you realize what war is all about. Before that it was all kind of, you know, but you look out there and you see all these guys in grotesque positions. And that we found out is this German style of defense. Fall back, get a line of defense, all the machine guns are all zeroed in so they're covering all, you don't have to call back and forth. They know that this is your, your field of fire, those machine guns covered everything. All the artillery, all of the uh, uh, mortars were already planned for that. So when they said fire, you didn't have to look around and say, well, do I go left, right? Everybody knew. They 
waited until the GIs got about halfway across, maybe two-thirds of the way across, and then they'd open up. All of a sudden, the machine guns would open up. Well, as soon as those machine guns open up, everybody hits the dirt. Well, it's just dirt. There's no, get your tool rig, entrenching tool out. You're going to stand out there and dig a hole in the ground when they're zigging all over. And then when they get you flat on the ground and then the bombs would come in, the artillery and the mortar fire, all planned ahead of time. And you're, that's why they kept saying, look for a ditch. If you can get in a ditch, you can kind of get some protection. But it wasn't too much. But the shock of my life was, I don't have to say the shock of my life was to stand out there and look down there and there's dead GIs all over there, all in grotesque positions. That was something I'll never, ever forget. How long had the dead Americans been there? How long? Been where? How long had those dead GIs from the 104th? How long had they been there before you came up? Oh, that night. They got killed that night, and we were there the next morning. And the Germans had pulled out. That was their next. They did, you know, okay, let's go over and kill those guys. They're gone. They pulled back to the next line of defense. Some were behind that in the next town. It might be the edge of town. Sometimes it's in trenches out in front. But that was their whole method of operation. They had that one, that one battle. They'd pull back. And when we'd have to go out again, and they, you know, their their figuring was, we're going to keep killing these guys this way, and we're not getting killed too much because we keep falling back into our defensive positions, and we're relatively safe back there, relatively safe. But that was that was the plan, and so then that, that the next day, of course, they we moved through all those GIs, and we set up a line about where the Germans were that night before. And that's the way it kept going. You just go from town to town to town in the same battle kind of program, but everybody made modifications. They realized, you know, if you're going to get out there in the middle of that field and there's nobody shooting at you, you better be sure that somebody's going to be leveling you with a machine gun. And we took, they took, did different things. They did things differently after one of those two battles. But that's the way we felt. We, we, we went through Holland and took one town after the other, and the people would come out. They would be in their basements when they knew we were fighting through there, and they'd come out, oh, getting hugs and kisses, you know, for taking, freeing us from the Germans. But, so that was, that was combat in Holland. Now, 